I'm Damon Zell, and this is your Eve Echoes Weekly Community News, where we take a deep dive into all the happenings of the week. But first, you know what to do. If you can tag that subscribe button, ring that bell, share and like the video, then you can stay up to date with everything, everything that this channel has to offer. Okay, let's first start off with a correction from the last episode. There was a kill mail that was floating in in the big kills where I stated that it was Void's kill. That was an honest mistake by me. Uh, Nilfgaard has not left No, Please Stop and rejoined Void. They are still proudly within No, so I do apologize for that. That kill was uh, supposed to go under No's category. And now, even though we have a big episode and a lot of news to cover, a lot of things have gone down in the last 10 days, uh, and I'm going to try and squeeze it all in and respect your time. I'm trying not to make a 40-minute video to an hour-long video, but uh, because some people were asking me in DMs how my little pilot's doing, well, here's an update for him. He's actually walking now. That's right. Walking, running, falling down, and generally having a blast while doing it. So... There's your update. Everything is uh, good. He's just getting over a cold, but uh, yeah, everything's doing good on that front. Let's begin where we left off in the last episode with the spectacular fall of Genesis Federation and the dissolving of that alliance, which then sprouted forth multiple alliances from that. You have the Brethren Court, you have Valorous, you have the Red-Headed Stepchild uh, children. There is another one I think it's called Exodus. I'm not really sure. I, I do apologize those of you who are in that, um, but no one contacted me from there. But it did form off all these multiple alliances, which are now vying for power within the old Genesis uh, state of territories. And now some of these alliances have been butting head as they vie for power within the old Genesis power base. None more so than the Brethren Court and the Red-Headed Stepchildren. Now, if you do listen to Rambo's podcast, The Echoes of New Eden, last week's show, he did have an interview with Oyser, which gives the Brethren Court side of things on how the diplomatic talks with the red-headed stepchildren have broken down. Now, because that the R.E.D.H. dropped a citadel within contested space, there was the whole thing about how the Brethren Court was going to tax them 100 billion isk per month to remain in that system. Now, there is a thread on Reddit that shows the entire, well, most of the Diplo exchange between Oyser as well as Epitaph on the whole thing. The arguments did get heated and the talks did break down. And that, four, that 100 billion a month was not just for that system, it was for the four constellations held by uh, REDH, which is, consists of basically the BZ Pocket. Now, from the interview, you do get a sense that the Brethren Corps is trying to decide exactly what to do because they are scattered. They are trying to consolidate space, uh, and they do have a chunk in period basis that they're trying to figure out what to do with. Now, you can argue that the whole game of EVE is everyone versus everyone. It is a PvP-centric game, and the Brethren Court is a PvP-focused alliance, whereas REDH is more of a indie semi uh pve and pvp uh alliance they're not focused purely on that pvp aspect and they've gone on record saying they will fight and are willing to fight for what they deserve what they feel is theirs and that what they have earned now i did ask oiser about that 100 billion claim of extortion from those living in old gen space and on the subject, back on May 2nd, he did state that renter models and mercenaries are not a new phenomenon to EVE or to EVE Echoes. Genesis Federation, despite its many positive accomplishments, was infamous for its low expectations and even lower taxation on its corporations. This led to the hardcore PvP-focused corporations of the Alliance being yoked and overburdened to protect a blue donut largely comprised of smaller or indie slash pve corporations some of which seemingly only joined the federation because it was large and provided access to some of the richest space in nullsec not because it comprised a wonderful community of people genesis was fractured a small band of fighters have transitioned from a space tyranny to a feudal monarchy led by a pirate king named meliodas as it re relates uh, to the figure of 100 billion per month, it was a response to REDH, an alliance of five corporations, 
at least one of which is solely comprised of a documented scripting mega boxer, a couple of others with infamous reputations, and no consistency, measurable military contribution in their time in Genesis. They have declared claim to 29 systems in Esoteria, a region which, at the time of the comment, uh, a pirate alliance holds sovereignty over. Their request for sovereignty because they formed first was ludicrous. And our response to what they would have, have to pay us to hold sway over that area without a fight demonstrated our contempt for their entitlement both now and in the past. These demands by a leader of red-headed stepchild, Epitaph, their executor, were consistently accompanied by cursing and insults, which he then kept deleting. Epitaph is claiming to be the victim currently with his alliance bullying and trampling out past neighbors even smaller than them. Thor Corporation has their citadel in ztac y 9 c 3 system. According to Thor CEO, REDH took their citadel to Hull and will eradicate their former neighbors on Friday at the Hull Timer. Except for REDH, BRR uh, has had minimal gray on gray violence with our past associations from GenFed. In our first three days of existence, we have already found a handful of corporations that are excited to partner with Brethren Court in the building of a gray universe where they can find content, but neither be entirely blown out of space or CTA to death to save a space donut. Now, there are many different screenshots that have been sent to me that also have made their way to Reddit. And if you do want to see them, I suggest going to Reddit and looking it up. Uh, to see exactly what was said in these documents. But Oyser did go on to say that here's the truth. Epitaph has put REDH in a precarious position by being excessively aggressive and expansionist by dropping in a system less than eight hours after we spoke and I told them we would contest it if they dropped. Now Epitaph has also supplied me with screenshots saying, uh, denying these bullying accusations. But again, this has all been put on hold due to the entry into the Fountain I Love You Coalition. Now, since then, and since there was some military conflicts, they have backed off of the whole rent demand, especially now since there is a new foe on the horizon, which is ZRQ, which is the Chinese fighting force that was Genesis. Now, I have heard people refer to ZRQ as... No, from back in the day, lean, muscular, looking for fights, and are always willing to fight outnumbered. Now both up in Detroit, uh, OG and Void have been going at ZRQ, trying to remove them from the region, and that has kind of slowed a little bit. And seeing as the war in the south, by the Fountain I Love You Coalition, is still ongoing, they are taking up the fight against ZRQ, and in doing so, have also included more within that coalition. That is the Brethren Court, Void, as well as OG. They are all now part of that coalition, which is now uh, at war with ZRQ. So you can definitely say that with the fall of Genesis, the political landscape has immensely changed and is ever evolving currently day to day. As well as ZRQ having a cap fleet that they are not worried about using or losing as what happened earlier today. Now, as of this morning on the 12th, the Philly Coalition was gathering for a CTA when it was noticed that the ZRQ was moving in a fleet of caps near the CTA location. Now, I am told that a hero dictator did notice that this fleet was moving close to the CTA fleet and was there to stop the cap fleet. And in doing so, the CTA fleet did engage and take down seven ZRQ Dreadnoughts. Six Naglfars and one Phoenix did fall to the CTA fleet during the engagement. Now, I have not been apprised to any losses that the CTA fleet may have incurred during this ambush, but the fact of the matter is that the ZRQ fleet did go down under the weight of the Philly Coalition. Now, this is also on the heels of a very successful up which did remove seven citadels that were left over from Genesis and ZRQ as well. One in Detroit, three in Tenefers, as well as three in Period Basis. Now, don't get confused by all the big blueness that is the Fountain I Love You Coalition, who have gone on record saying they will break ties 
as well as reset standings with all within as soon as the war is over. As it was formed to break down some of these mega alliances and mega corporations to fill the gaps with smaller alliances and smaller groups so that there is more conflict within the universe. You have to destroy to create. And in doing so, the Silent Federation has uh, brought out an official press release uh, from Zen uh, to this tune of, in the interest of ensuing game stability and enhanced no-sec opportunities for the EVE Echoes community, the Silent Federation is releasing sovereignty over the pure blind region. We are pleased to invite alliances and corporations, large and small, that wish to settle in Nosek and make their mark on the Eve Echoes map. Pure Blind is optimally situated on the Eve map, offering convenient access to Empire Space to the south and opportunities to explore and venture deeper into Null to the north. Nosek offers the alliances the best of Eve Echoes. Whether your alliance is looking to become an industrial leader or is seeking the thrill of Nosek PvP, Pure Blind can be your home. Eve Echoes has brought much to the Sound Federation, and with this gesture, we hope to give back to the pilots of Eve so that all players can thrive, enjoy, and contribute to the dynamic and vibrant community. So you heard it right there. They are actually pulling out of Pure Blind, and it's now up for grabs. Whoever wants to go in and move in and put their mark on the map, so to speak. I was able to get a comment from Zen, the leader of the Silent Federation. In such, he says, on the subject of the dissolution of the Genesis Federation, the last month has seen unprecedented upheaval in the Eve Echoes community. I want to start by thanking our opponents. Eve is a game of war and battles, communities, and intrigue. The wins and losses were some of the most exciting battles, and the war has left its indelible mark on the history of eve we thank you for coming out to challenge our fleets for the hard work and dedication it takes to lead forces into battle genesis fought well and with honor be proud of yourselves and your teams with the end of genesis federation it is our hope that the corporations and alliances that have splintered off will seek a fresh start and thrive in the newfound independence to that end, we recently announced an opening to Pure Blind to any and all alliances and corporations that wish to strike out anew. To the pilots of the Philly Coalition, I could not be more proud of the way you came together and prosecuted this war. We called you and you answered. To our corp leaders, partner alliances, and especially our FCs, thank you for all you have done to secure this victory. This war saw unparalleled 24-7 CTA activity, and it's important to recognize those that made this possible. I want to thank our military leaders for leading countless CTAs, and each pilot for their individual participation. Additionally, I want to thank our partners at No, particularly Run and Tahini, for leading the joint fleets into battle. I also want to thank the coalition leadership team and our folks behind the scenes working logistics, SRP, uh, dispute resolution industry and infrastructure without which waging war and having fun with this great community would not be possible. As we turn to the future, I look forward to continued opportunities to grow the EVE Echoes community. This war brought great content and adventure to the game and we look forward to continuing this adventure through the many battles and wars to come. Now, I did ask a follow-up question, and that was because there was the dispute between Brethren Court and the Red-Headed Stepchildren, where the R.E.D.H. was dropping a Citadel, and Brethren Court was going to attack the Citadel after it came out of its anchoring phase. However, they did stand down after Silent Federation asked them to. So I wanted to ask, what was the relationship between Silent and the new factions, R.E.D.H., Brethren Court, Valorous, all the new entities in that region. And Zen had to say, we had specific goals coming into this conflict and don't get particularly involved in the details of new organizations and their policies for regrowth in the current state in the South. We always strive to communicate and understand others in the community. However, we don't interfere with their policies and working that don't directly impact our operations or strategic objectives. This one impacted some nearby operations and we requested the Brethren Corps to stand down as it would have directly interfered with our war objectives at the time.
Meliodas understood the potential issues and agreed that this would be the best resolution to the subject. Now, the argument has also been made that once everything does break down, the only mega alliance that will be left will be the Silent Federation. So, it does also speak to will they become their own target in the future. With whatever happens in the future, we all know that possibly the community is safe and is now thriving with all these separate groups. And almost everyone I've spoken to has gone on record saying that this is some of the most fun that they've had in a really long time within the game. As a re-edit and update to this story, uh, sources within the Philly Coalition have told me that this war in the South will likely be coming to its end at the end of this weekend. In fact, there's actually a statement put out by No for a full standings reset, and it reads, No will be conducting a full standings reset. All post-war agreements and business should be concluded within the next four to five days. It has been a particular pleasure flying with Silent and its amazing FC team. Much respect to the bros in RETC, RM, and BLAP that joined us on our journey. We look forward to seeing what new content is brought from the South, and we wish the best of luck to all the new entities that have been created as part of this conflict. We will be going back to our roots as mercenaries. Feel free to reach out to anyone you know for contract work. Uh, see you around New Eden in the days to come. So it looks like life will be starting at new and within New Eden, and there'll be a lot more greys out there for the future. So good luck with everyone, and fly safe and fire true. Now last episode we did also speak on another war that's going on currently between Wild Geese and Trimark, which also includes Red Machine. Now I said last week that I did reach out to representatives of Red Machine as well as Wild Geese and had yet to get an answer back. Now I did get an answer back but it looks like some of the people that I reached out to were not affiliated with or were no longer affiliated with those entities. Now, as I said, I did reach out to both Wild Geese as well as Red Machine. I'm going to paraphrase War, um, Wild Geese's statement, but the full statement is there on your screen for you. They basically say that, uh, I don't know why they is called a war, uh, Wild Geese call this vengeance. Now, on the Red Machine, I did get a quote stating that it is proven that uh, Trimark decided to cover a thief who even confessed. There is a thread on Reddit with the screenshots indicating that. This wasn't left without a response from Wild Geese. As Wild Geese are one of the oldest Red Machine allies, we never turn our back to them, so we decided to provide some support to them. Red Machine has no intention in obtaining extra territories. In fact, I think you know that we are trying to get rid of some of the space that we don't use. They also want to go on record saying that in the last battle with Tarmark, they did not use 11 capitals in that battle, only around 3 to 5. Uh, feel the quantity as they feel that the battle specifically didn't warrant them as well as they didn't want to take down that citadel and make the battle not enjoyable for all. They also got a record saying that we completely understand the decision that Trimark made regarding that player but that doesn't mean we need to agree with that. All actions is a result of that disagreement. Red Machine did not intend to invade Trimark's space and in fact uh, I guess Trimark knows that they had only one hold timer on one citadel and this is not how invasions look. Now I did follow up with a question that if wild geese structures are at risk from a Trimark attack as stated through the Trimark statement last episode, would Red Machine step in to defend or do they feel that wild geese is fully able to repel any attack from Trimark themselves? And the response I got was that Red Machine would surely help wild geese defend all of their structures. The Mercenary Coalition did have their meeting on the 7th and it was acknowledged that they are moving forward and they are back. So they are open for any contracts if you want to make uh, use of their services. You can reach out to the Mercenary Coalition via their Discord or uh, reach out to one of their representatives such as Saint Nightmare or the Promised One. Did you know that there is efforts ongoing currently right now to collect the complete history of Eve Echoes since it launched via the community such as all the wars all the alliances that have risen and fallen and these are all collected within a wiki page called the history of Eve Echoes 
individuals from all communities uh, of each alliance and power base have come together to discuss the wars that they were involved in to get basically the facts of exactly how it began, what went down, and how it ended. Now, of course, the process is still ongoing as a lot of the history is still being collected and debated, uh, sifting through propaganda, fact, and fiction, uh, coming through old videos, as well as picking the brains of FCs that were involved in those fights. Currently, right now, on the wiki page, there are four wars that have been... Uh, Sorry, that have gone through this period, vetted, and have now been published. You have the Pantheon War, the Great Northern War, the Declan War, and of course, World War Gen. The historians are busy still debating, still discussing all the other wars that have happened since the game's launch. So I do bid you to keep an eye out on this page to learn more uh, if you haven't been involved in any of the Nullsec Wars or any of the any battles <laughs> to read up and to see exactly what went down and how everything went down and of course if you do want to be a part of this the uh the historic society to uh talk about each of these wars and give your output on them uh i will try to get the information on who to contact and who's going to head everything up via that source and put it in the description below now it's time for a heartwarming kind of story and this involves uh two great friends of mine who unfortunately i do not fly with anymore but the community does possibly know both of them uh weird bob the uh devastator of fleets and uh interceptor fc extraordinaire as well as dark marshall and this story is going to be told from the point of another friend of mine uh lex 013 now, I've met Lex and her husband, Mez, uh, through XTC when Terran Federation first fell back in, a year and a half ago. And we moved out towards the north area where we formed the TRA, the Rebel Alliance. Of course, no affiliation with the Rebel Alliance that's currently right now in Teneferis. Anyway, I'm going to read what she wrote. And uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, by the end of the story, you're going to have one of those awe moments. A long time ago, many alliances ago, XTC started flying with our closest friends and sister corporation, EVO-1. There was this FC named Weird Bob who was known galaxy-wide even then for his fast pace and super fun scepter roams. This was back in the era of Bob's large group shield boosters on Inti Fits. EVO and XTC eventually left that alliance, uh, the TRA, and moved south to the OG Empire. It was here during the Bob Cheap Fit era that we encountered somewhat a rare specimen, but not as rare as you think, a female gamer. Dark Marshall was a member of a corporation, DNUK, at the time, but soon we saw her in comms more and more with EVO pilots. When XTC and EVO uh, left OG and joined Genesis, none of us were surprised that Marshall came along. At GenFed, the fits evolved again and we were allowed to start flying slightly more expensive ships. If any of you know, Bob hates, hates, hates expensive ships in his fleets. Then, kind of suddenly, Marshall and Bob took a break from the game. Uh, no one at the time knew that they had the hots for each other. When Bob came back a few months later, uh, I was surprised to hear Marshall's voice. But the strange thing was, she wasn't listed as being in comms. Where was her voice coming from? After scouring the Discord voice chat, I wished I realized that she was talking via Weird Bomb's comms. We forced them to fess up and discover that they were dating in real life. Also, when Bob came back to Genesis from his break, that's when they officially entered the Faction Frig era. Fast forward to now in the Brethren Court, tonight Bob casually mentions in comms that his wife was getting him a beer. And Lex would like to know that, uh, make it known that she would like to declare that this is officially her favorite bob fitting of all time. She says, Myself and Ecstasy wish you nothing uh, but the best in your future wives together, both in real life and internet spaceships. We are bummed we weren't invited to the wedding, but nevertheless, instead of the traditional greeting card and check, you'll be receiving a gift of isk from your friends at XTC. Go ahead and check your contracts. Congratulations to the wonderful couple. So yes, this I believe is on record for the first wedding and meetup via Eve Echoes. 
they've met in game. They cultivated their relationship in game, um, and this bloomed to the fruitation of their marriage. So, from me, congratulations to both Dark Marshall and Bob, and I hope you guys have a wonderful life together. And you know, don't take it personally when I kill you on the grid. I still love you, but like I said, this is one of the heartwarming sections of the news that uh, we've learned over the last week. Are you currently in the market for a carrier to do some PvE work? Well, look no further. The Big Skillet is having another giveaway where he is giving away a Nidhogger to his community. Now, my words are not going to be as good as his, so I'm just going to let him explain exactly what you need to do to go ahead and qualify to get in on this contest. What you need to do to win. And, and it's pretty simple, right? You need to be a subscriber. The second thing is you need to post a comment to this video with your in-game name. That way, in case you win, I will know who to contract the, the Nidhogger to in-game. And lastly, make sure you like the video. And I'm not gonna draw this video out. It doesn't need to, be, need to be very long, but it's really my way of saying thank you to the community for supporting me over the last year or so um, with all the Echoes content. I, I really appreciate uh, all the kind words. And I will, I do plan on live streaming the updated faction war games when they release the new dir mode uh, i'm kind of over the the current mode so that's why i haven't live streamed that in, in quite a long time but I, I do plan on doing that once again thank you very much i, I really appreciate all the support and, and i'll finish it off with if you like videos like this subscribe to the channel now if you're not familiar with phoenix tassador he was the genesis lead fc for a year and a half through the Genesis Wars, and he has, you know, since then left and become one of the great FCs of No Please Stop. Now, he lived through the whole era of basically what was laundered, the dirty laundry out on Reddit of what happened to Genesis and how it folded from the inside out. Now, in his words, he has an entire history of exactly what he went through and how he saw the erosion of that great uh, alliance. Now, I'm not going to get into exactly what he did, but if you are interested, I will leave a link to the thread in the description below so that you can go ahead and read it and find out exactly what he went through as a senior FC within Genesis. Now, before we get into the Corporation Alliance Spotlight of the Week, I do want to just go into a little detail of what we're going to be doing on the channel moving forward. And also, if I didn't get to your story this week, I am sorry. I was just been inundated uh, with stories this week. A lot of news has broken this past week. And unfortunately, a lot of in real life bad luck. Uh, my Both my cars are now down and out. I have to figure out what I'm going to do for transportation. Uh, so... Yeah, so it's it's just been everything compounded. But let's get back into the topic here. On this channel, I am going to be producing both Diablo Immortal content as well as Eve Echoes content. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to be taking a step back. I might take a step back from actually playing Eve Echoes a little bit uh, just so I can produce more content on Diablo Immortal. I'm only going to be streaming Diablo Immortal because it's a little bit friendlier to stream that content than Eve Echoes content. Uh, but never fear, your Eve Echoes community news and sometimes game news, if I can fit it in, will always be on this channel and will always be featured. But I do invite you to partake of the other content as well if that is something that interests you. I'm just looking to branch out and have, you know, the most fun I could possibly have. And I do invite you to come along with me. Now, also, don't worry, we are also still doing that freighter raid at the end of the month, beginning of June, somewhere in those four weeks, uh, the last two weeks of May and the first two weeks of June. I am still receiving donations. If you do want to donate for the freighter raid, uh, please just send a contract to me in-game, Damon Space. Uh, Zell, um, and if you can possibly do it, put it in a, uh, a station, not the main Jita station, the ITC, but just one of those surrounding Jita stations, so I can kind of just separate it from the other stuff I have, and I'll be moving all this stuff periodically to where I have the freighter parked. And I'm still discussing with others exactly what we're going to do for the freighter raid, uh, when it's going to be launched. If, and in fact, actually, if you guys want i can put up a straw poll as to when the best time to have this raid is you know uh time zone 
wise. Uh, but if not, you know, if you want to put in the comments below when you would be liking to see this freighter raid, you know, what time zone you'd like this to be in, uh, I'm going to take all that into consideration. And also, anyone who donates for this will be acknowledged in that stream uh, or in the community news leading up to or right after that event happens. Okay, this week on the Corporation Alliance Spotlights, we are featuring Rebel Alliance. Now, if you haven't already seen Plastered Across Reddit and everywhere else, they're doing a huge media campaign, and they're basically taking over most of Teneferis. And yes, I know most likely I am butchering that region's name, but, you know, I, you can send letters in the comments below. Welcome to Teneferis, the home of the Rebel Alliance, where we have claim to many of the pockets within that region. We're open for all diplomatic discussions with members and corporations who would like to join us. We thrive where others may have failed, and we are not afraid to defend those who need defending. We will stand our ground. This is the home for PvP, mining and industry, as well as PvE. Our motto is strength through unity, brotherhood through force. Fly safely, the Founders. Now I, like others, have taken note of the Rebel Alliance and their claim in that area, and have already heard that they do have caps supporting their alliance, and as well have dropped seemingly almost overnight a bunch of citadels claiming that region. So if you are interested in joining them or inquiring about them, their contact information will be in the description below. Go ahead and reach out. Now in this week in What The Fit, we do have many, many ships that did qualify for this week's segment. The first of which is being twin missile scythes. Yep, you heard me right. Two scythes that instead of healing, wanted to damage each other by using medium torpedoes. Now next we also have this Cormoran Interdictor who feels that he needs to not only stop ships with the power of the Interdictor, but kill them in a manner of using the weapon most preferable to his prey. In such, he uses small strikes, a small pulse laser, as well as small rails. Now here's something you don't see every day, a daredevil using small torpedoes. Because why bother using ship bonuses? Now this one technically is not a what the fit, because I feel he is just a hunter, a wolf, in sheep's clothing. That's right, there is a hunting coveter using medium auto cannons. Next up, we have the mixed missile Tempest. Yes, you heard me. There are two missiles to go along with the five cannons equipped on this Tempest. A lover of missiles is always a downfall. And last up, you have the rare Lodgy Bomber. Now, actually, I can't explain this one because it is Dark Marshall and I, I know Dark Marshall, and she is a non-combatant. She loves to find the targets for others to kill, but doesn't want to do the fighting herself. And now before we move into the big kills of the week, I do have an honorable mention. And this goes out, uh, because have you ever found a, with your small gang, to jump a lone ship in Nihilus, or do you find a group that you're flying solo and you want to jump an entire group? Well. These people that have done this, uh, it completely fell apart for them. These four pilots experienced that when jumping a lone Brutix in a Nihilus. Uh, the pilot Penny Dreadful not only fended off the attack, but killed four of the five attackers in the process. So a salute does go out to this pilot, and remember that sometimes an easy kill can always, sometimes, be anything but that. Now we move into the big kills of the week, and Beer starts us off with a 12.9 billion Balgorn kill. NVS has two Vindicators, one for 5.5 billion, the other for 5.6 billion. EXDS gives us two Nightmares, one at 5 billion, the other at 5.1. Two Balgorns, one at 8.9, the other at 7 billion. And one Macario at 5.4. The Brethren Court gives us five Balgorn kills, one at 6.9 billion, one at 9.2, one at 7.7, .7, one at 6.8, and the last at 10.6. They also have three Macario kills, one at 7.1, one at 5.7, and the last at 7.6. They got not one, but two Charon Freighter kills this week. 
The first being at 15.3 billion and the second at 17.8 billion. And of course, let's throw in a 7.5 billion rattlesnake for good measure. The space cows got also a Balgorn kill this week, this one at an 11.6 billion price tag. Myth gives us a 5.5 billion nightmare kill. They also come in with three Macario kills. One at 5.6 billion, one at 5.4 billion, and the last at 12.8. We also have a 7 billion Vindicator kill from Myth as well. No Please Stop has given us uh, two Balgorn kills, one at 6.4 billion, and the other at an impressive 16.7 billion. They also got a 7.3 billion Nightmare kill as well. The Mercenary Coalition comes in with a 10.7 billion Vindicator kill, as well as a 7.4 billion Macario kill. Smug gives us a 5.7 billion Rattlesnake kill, and Wild Geese gives us a 9.1 billion Nereus 2 kill as well. Now this week has been littered with the corpses of capital ships, so we're going to dig right into it. We have two Nidhoggers killed by EXDS, uh, one at 34.7 billion and the second at 32.9 billion. Trimark has also gotten two Nagofar kills, one at 36.8 billion, the other at 39.3. T-Cosmos also got a Nidhogger kill at 39.3 billion. The Flying Circus seems to have had a cap fight where they got five capital kills, two Nidhoggers, one at 40.4 billion, one at 43.2 billion, a Thanatos at 32.7 billion, a Revelation at 38.2 billion, and a Morose at 39.8 billion. The Space Cows also got themselves a rare find in a 37.6 billion Archon kill. And the Brethren Corps also got two carrier kills this week, two Nidhoggers, one at 49.5 billion, the other at 38.9. Now remember, No also has seven cap kills this week, but we went over that earlier in the video. And now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show. That's right, the solo kills of the week, which are broken down into two, two categories. One the industrial, one the PvP. Now let's get into the industrial kills of the week. Chips Deluxe leads us off with a 1.2 billion cover to two kill. Gosax with a 1.3 billion cover to two. ODPS Legend with a 1.400 billion cover to two kill. Edison Johnny with a 1.470 billion cover to two kill. Honey Bunny with a 1.7 billion Dramio kill. Sharika Dario with a 1.9 billion Bestower kill. Wild Nigel with a 2 billion Heron Explorer kill. Pillar Hammer with a 2.7 billion Nereus 2 kill. I'm Tommy with a 3.1 billion Badger 2 kill. And the next kill, just so everyone sees that I am non biased. Gray Fox with a 7.9 billion Badger 2 kill. Yes, feast your eyes on the victim of that kill. Yes, it was me. But the winner of this week goes to Yari Yarak with a 12.5 billion Nereus 2 kill. Congratulations on your prize. And we're going to move right over to the PvP category. Uh, Tofanofu gives us a 1.1 billion Tornado 2 kill. Guck Bak Zip gives us a 4.6 billion Orthrus kill. Paranoid AW gives us a 5.1 billion Rattlesnake kill. Kenobi comes in with a 5.5 billion Slasher Interceptor kill. Ron Solo gives us a 6.6 .6 billion Estero kill. Airbus A380-800 uh, gives us a 6.7 billion Balgorn kill. And the winner this week in the PvP category is Andre J uh, Bit with a 9.7 billion Dromeo kill. All right, guys, congratulations on your prizes. Hook me up, uh, sorry, hit me up on, on Discord, and I'll tell you how we can get that prize out to you. And that's going to be our show for this week. Now, if you need more news in your life, you know where I'm going to send you. You're going to go over to Sky News, the premier Russian outlet news. You're going to go over to the legendary uh, um, Echoes of New Eden podcast with Taylor Rick and Rambo. If you want to be part of the live audience, just go into their Discord around uh, 10 p.m. on Eastern Standard Times on Thursdays. You're also going to have the Blue Bulletin uh, powered by the Auxilis Killbot because we don't have an API yet, so this is the next best thing. Go ahead and get that uh, Killbot to your Discord today. 
and last week we have the new Eden Radio and you're gonna find they have some great live shows the best one uh, I feel is on Sundays so go ahead and check them out so for me have a great weekend have a great week fly safe and remember we are always one vision one purpose one front <laughs>